I am Harav Dawood bin Dabi bin Yusuf. You may call me Rabbi Dud. And welcome to Lessons in Wacky Midrash. Now, you may ask to yourself, what is Midrash? What Midrash is, is basically rabbinical fan theory. The rabbis will look in the Bible and they will see an anomaly, they will see a strange thing in the text, and they will try to find a way to explain it with a wacky story. So this day we are going to be discussing the plague of frogs. You know the plague of frogs, you know the Bnei Israel. they are in Egypt land, God tells Moshe to let my people go, ten plagues, Paro is a joke, you know the spiel. So, when it comes to the plague of frogs, God says to Moshe, he says, go to your brother Aharon, tell him to stretch his hand out over the waters of Egypt, and the frogs will come forth, upon the land of Egypt. And then what does the next verse say? The next verse says that Aharon went to the waters of Egypt. He held his hand out over the waters and the frog came out of the river. Yes. The frog. Now the story then continues. Paro is very upset about the frogs. He says to Moshe, get rid of the frogs. Moshe says, not until you let my people go. And he says, yeah, I will let your people go. And uh, she says, all right, I will get rid of the frogs. And for the rest of the story, it's frogs, frogs, frogs. But this one time, Aharon reaches his hand over the river and the frog comes out of the river. What is this meant to mean? Why this strange anomaly? A text. And this is when the Midrash comes along and says, I've I got a wacky story for you, buckle up. <laughs> so, this is according to Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Akiva says, Aharon put his hand over the waters, and a single frog came out of the river. But not just any frog, the frog. The largest frog you have ever seen in your life. An enormous frog. So loud that it blot out the sun. <laughs> and the Egyptians saw this frog and they went, Enormous frog. Quick, hit it. Hit it with sticks. And they all start hitting it. And when they hit it, more frogs spew forth from this giant frog. And the Egyptians said, It's doing for the other frogs. Hit it again! And they hit it again, and more frogs start spewing out, and he said, it keeps doing it! Hit it harder! And they kept hitting and hitting until the entire land of Egypt was covered in frogs. Now, the rabbis asked the obvious question, why would they do this? Why would they keep doing this over and over again? They could have stopped the plague just by stopping hitting the frog. The answer, of course, is because when the Egyptians saw this frog, they became angry. And this is a lesson. When you get angry, you do stupid, stupid things. Now, if you are a rationalist, rationalists, the rationalist will tell you, listen, you do not need the story about the one frog. It says the frog because it's referring to a swarm of frogs. And even in English, a swarm is many things, but the word swarm is a singular word. A swarm, you don't say yes, the swarm are, you say the swarm is. So it's not that strange for it to say the frog. The frog means a swarm of frogs. It, it, linguistically, it makes perfect sense. But the Midrash says no. No, this, this makes sense. This is rational. But if we were to approach it rationally, we would not have the story, and we would not have the lesson. I personally am here to frog, right? Kaiju frog. Hi.